All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start a discussion today about um, energy uh, and energy transformations, the different forms that energy comes in, how, is it, how it changes from one form to another. Um, to start out with, we need to talk about what exactly energy is. So energy, in very simple terms, is the ability to do work. So we just finished talking about both work and power. Energy is what gives the ability to do the work. Um, work is a force applied uh, over a distance. Energy is what gives the ability to uh, apply that force over a distance. There are a lot of different kinds of energy, but for the most part, not entirely, but for the most part, all of those different kinds of energy can be put into two large categories. One is kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. We've talked about that just a little bit. Um, the second is potential energy. Potential energy is energy that is stored up. It is not currently causing motion or movement but it does have that potential. So let's focus in first on kinetic energy. So we said it's the energy of motion. So all moving objects have kinetic energy. How much kinetic energy they have is all dependent upon two things. It's dependent on the speed of the object. So how fast is it moving? The more speed that it has, the more kinetic energy that it has. So fa the faster something is going, the, fa the more kinetic energy that it has. An object that is moving really quickly has more kinetic energy than something that is moving slowly. But it's not based just on speed. If two objects have the same speed, then the one with more mass has more kinetic energy. So it's based on mass as well as speed. So the mass of an object affects the kinetic energy of an object, just as the speed of an object affects the kinetic energy. Um, they affect each other uh, to different, um, they affect kinetic energy to different amounts, um, but they both do have an effect. So again, if you have a couple of objects, they have the same speed, so you know, two cars traveling 50 miles an hour, or maybe you have a car and a, uh, uh, tractor trailer truck, both going 50 miles an hour. Uh, the tractor trailer truck is actually going to have uh, more uh, kinetic energy because it has a greater mass. Um, it is heavier than the car. We can actually calculate kinetic energy, assuming that we know the mass of the object that is moving and we know the velocity of the object that is moving. So we can do that by uh, by taking one half of the mass times the velocity squared. So a couple of things that we need to keep in mind here. Um, I'm going to see if I can't do a little bit of drawing. Um, so EK, this EK right here, the E stands for energy. The K tells us that the energy is kinetic energy. All right, so the K is just kind of de designating what kind of energy that is. So EK stands for kinetic energy. Um, the M, of course, starts stands for mass. The V stands for speed or velocity. Uh, you need to make sure that your mass is in grams, and you need to make sure that your speed is in or your velocity is in meters per second in order to do the calculation. Uh, when we say it's mass times velocity squared, the squared is only going with the velocity. So you are only squaring the velocity. You are not squaring the mass. All right, and so if Instead of what we have, you know, instead of what we actually do have here, if there were parentheses around the mass times the times the velocity, and then the squared was outside, then we would multiply mass times velocity first, and then we would do squared. But that is not how the equation is written. Um, so because of that, what we are actually going to do 
is we are going to multiply the velocity times itself, or do velocity squared. Then we're going to multiply it times the mass. And then we're going to multiply it by 1 half, or that's the same thing as dividing by 2. Okay? Um, but you want to make sure you're not squaring anything except for the velocity. All right. So. Let's move on to potential energy. We're going to play around with that, uh, that formula for uh, kinetic energy a little bit more in, in the days to come. But for right now, let's move on to potential energy. We mentioned earlier that that is energy that is stored, and it's stored due to the interactions between objects or particles. Um, so a few examples here of types of potential energy. You have gravitational potential energy, and gravitational potential energy is energy that is stored uh, basically between an object and the Earth. So uh, the higher an object is, the further it is away from the center of the Earth, the more gravitational potential energy it has, the more potential it has to start moving. And when it does start moving, because it falls, because gravity pulls it back towards the Earth, it's going to uh, that gravitational potential energy is going to switch to kinetic energy and it will become more and more and more uh, as it falls. And um, so the higher that something is, the more gravitational potential energy it has. So if we think back to uh, the lab, the running the stairs lab, the higher the climber went toward the top of the stairs, the more gravitational potential energy they had when they were at the bottom of the stairs. They didn't have uh, very much gravitational potential energy. As they got higher and higher, they had more and more. Uh, another type of potential energy is elastic potential energy. All right, Elastic potential energy is energy that is stored uh, in objects that can be either stretched or compressed. So stretched like a rubber band, uh, compressed like a spring. Right, those have elastic potential energy. And then the last one that we're going to talk about at the moment, uh, we'll mention another one in a few minutes, but uh, is chemical potential energy. And that is energy that is stored in the chemical bonds between atoms. So for instance, um, if we use a fairly common uh, substance such as table salt, um, NaCl, sodium chloride. And if we were to take that sodium and that chlorine uh, in the form of salt, those are chemically bonded together. If we were to break the bond between them, a lot of energy uh, would be released and that is chemical potential energy. So it is the energy that is stored in the bonds that holds uh, that hold different substances together. Um, one last little tidbit of information here before we uh, take a look at some different kinds of energy is uh, a really important thing called the law of conservation of energy. It's important to understand that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can transform or change from one type of energy to another. But it cannot be created or destroyed. When God created the universe, it was created with all the energy it was going to have. Um, and uh, that energy continues to cycle, so to speak, and to change forms constantly, all the time. Um, and we're going to talk more about that in the days to come, too. But, uh, but it is not created or destroyed. It is conserved. So therefore, we have the law of conservation of energy. All right, so I'd like you to take a look at the graphic organizer. It talks about the types of energy. Um, basically, we can divide, as we talked earlier, energy up into two basic categories, kinetic and potential. We do have a couple of kinds that probably do fit in the kinetic category, but we definitely experience them a little differently than some of the others. Um, so we have thermal energy as one of the types of kinetic. So the different types of kinetic are listed over here on the left-hand side. Thermal energy is basically the energy of moving particles. 
um, the energy of it, it's basically heat. All right, so so heat is caused by higher and higher in, or increased movement among particles or among molecules, things of that sort. Um, mechanical energy is energy that is uh, basically due to the motion or position of objects. Um, Another way to say it is that it is the sum of all of the kinetic and potential energy in, uh, in an object. Um, electrical energy is electric charge that is moving through a wire. Uh, magnetic energy is the energy that is causing a push or a pull between objects. Um, sound and light energy, again, sort of can be considered uh, types of kinetic energy. Um, sound is energy that travels in waves, which we can hear, uh, and light is energy that travels in waves that our eyes are able to detect. Then you have the potential types of potential energy on the right-hand side. So potential energy, again, is stored energy. We talked about chemical. Um, we talked a little bit about elastic. Um, we talked about gravitational, certainly. We haven't really spoken about nuclear yet. Nuclear energy is the energy that is stored in the uh, nucleus of any atom. So chemical energy is different in that it is uh, the energy that makes up the bonds between atoms, like when atoms join together to form a new substance. Stuff we'll talk more about when we get to our chemistry uh, part of the year. But nuclear energy is actually stored in the nucleus of the atom. So every single atom has a nucleus. Uh, the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons, and those protons and neutrons are held together in the nucleus by nuclear energy. Um, if you were to try and take the protons and neutrons of an atom apart, nuclear energy would be released. And in certain atoms, when you do that, you have a very, very large amount of energy that is released, um, enough energy uh, to be incredibly destructive, destroy, destroying huge um, areas, um, as in a nuclear bomb. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue to talk about these types of energy uh, in the days to come and to really focus in on uh, how these different types of energy can change from one form to another, another from one type of energy to another. I uh, hope you have a great day, guys. Thank you so much.